Okay, so here's the refrigerator car on the layout. This is the stock uh, speaker, and we'll just have a listen to it. I'll just plug in the DCC here. Okay, so here's the mega bass speaker. And it actually sounds like a gen set air conditioner now. What a massive difference that is. Jeez, you know? It's incredible, eh, that a speaker would make that much difference. Anyway, as you can hear, it sounds pretty tinny. I mean, who wants to listen to that anyway? You know, it's drive you crazy after five minutes or whatever. Anyway, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install that bass woofer speaker in there, and I think it's going to make a big difference. So, and then we'll have another look at it, okay? Okay, how's everybody doing? So this is going to be a sound upgrade on this 57-foot uh, mechanical reefer. It's an Atherin Genesis car. Nice-looking car. Um, you know, in hindsight, I wouldn't have bothered buying the sound one, but I bought one, and that's all I'll buy. And uh, But anyway, I don't like the sound. The sound is very cheesy. Uh, this is the cheap little speaker here that I'm going to just rip out of there. And you can see this the speaker box there, but this thing deserves a sound upgrade when you think about it if you pay that kind of money for one you know you might as well um, and it's not that hard to do it's actually probably the a recommended sound upgrade for those that are just getting into it okay so um, just a quick overview on this board there's a little volume control right here but that's all you can do you can't uh, control the the uh, duration and the frequency at which the uh, little diesel gen set kicks in on your DCC layout, it just comes on and off randomly and idles for a while and shuts off on its own. So I guess it has a built-in timer circuit in there or something. Anyway, the gentleman over at West Coast Rails did an interesting little tutorial on the sound grade up this, on this one. And what he did was, is he took out this speaker and he dropped in one of these little sugar cube jobs. Uh, in this case, this example is, uh, is the soundtracks uh, 810154 mini cube speaker and what he did was is he just basically cut the wires off soldered it onto here and simply just you know taped it or glued it in place like that okay and uh, it was a dramatic uh, sound increase I was really impressed uh, if you check out his channel West Coast Rails you'll see that he did one there you'll have to scroll through to find it through his videos and I don't know if there's any some of his comments are enabled, but some are turned off. So I don't know if you can ask him any questions or not about that. Anyway, so I'm not going to use this uh, mini cube speaker baffle. I'm going to use this for another project. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, uh, instead of the little sugar cuber, I'm going to use this 810130 27mm mega bass speaker at, at 2 watts capacity, which probably doesn't matter with this board, but... Anyway, uh, I want to see what it sounds like. I have this kicking around. I can't really use it in my long hoods right now. It's unless I do a major conversion and mount it sideways, you know, like this, because of the width of it. So what I've done is I'm is I built a speaker box here out of balsa wood. 
Yes, that's right, balsa wood. Uh, normally I'd build out of styrene plastic, 40 mil. But I had read somewhere on a forum, and I'm not sure where it is, where somebody recommended, oh, you should build one out of balsa wood. They, they sound awesome. So that's what I'm, I'm doing here. And I've used some uh, evergreen channel. You can use this square balsa or plastic balsa. It doesn't matter, but I just had some kicking around here. Some evergreen there. Uh, I'll list the number down below of the part number for it. Just C8 it together. Made a sort of a longer box. And then I just touched this on the disc sander. You know, just to get it to size. And then I'm going to I put a piece of rubber pad there. And then I'm going to mount a fascia piece, which will probably be out of plastic. And I'll just circle cut it. And then I'm going to mount it so that i got a little boom box, you know, like that. And I want to use this as a test anyway to see how these sound for future upgrades and other applications. Okay, so I drilled all the holes there, and then you just cut through each hole. You just press in, nibble, nibble, nibble. It goes pretty quick, and then just pops right out, right? There you go. That's how you cut inserts out, each square, round, whatever. You know, uh, you're not going to get anywhere scribing. Like, it's just not going to happen. So that's how you do, do that. And then I'll just clean this up, and then this speaker will get glued. There's a hard plastic rim here not this inner um, membrane it's inset there see anyway so that'll get mounted like that Okay, so here's the car. So I pretty much had to strip the car. I had to take everything out uh, in order to get this uh, molded in original speaker box. It's just in the way for this big daddy here. And um, so I hate to resort to this kind of butchery, but <laughs> uh, I don't recommend this for the faint of heart. But uh, the way you do it is you get in there and you nip. And you just nip away, you, you just turn the edges into confetti, 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 it's an old trick. <laughs> and then uh, it just pops off in little pieces. You just nibble it off. That's all you can do. And then you end up with a pile of Atherin Genesis plastic. <laughs> and then I get it clean. I can almost knock that out now with my finger, but... Anyway, I'll get that clean the floor and then scrape it, scrape her down with a chisel a little bit.
Okay, so you can see that I cleaned out that old speaker molding there with my, uh, you know, delicate touch. <laughs> you know, with my two favorite tools. Nippers and pliers, right? <laughs> Fine scale tools. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that's what you got to do, right? And then I got in there with these, you know, cleaned it up nice. And then what I did was I took a piece of foam. This is just foam from a, my fly tying box for tying ant body flies and stuff. You know, it's a type of foam. You can get it at any fly tying shop. It's a type of foam in different colors. Anyway, I glued a piece in there. And then I took this speaker box and I took a, on my disc sander, I took a millimeter off each. It was a little bit tight, so I just touched it on the disc sander. And so now it fits in there just nice and snug. It'll sit down on top of that rubber mat. And there I'll just tack her down with some canopy glue and, and that way you can see that the speaker will face towards the gen set there see and then I even drilled a few little extra holes right here so I should get pretty good sound out of here now I think you know even at a low volume it should sound thumpy and bassy right anyway I'm looking forward to that I'm I'm liking now the way this is going. It's turned out pretty good. I really wish I could get that kind of a speaker in one of my diesels, so in the, in the long hood or something, maybe. Sideways, I'm not really sure. I think there's a smaller one, a, not a 27 mil, but a uh, 23 millimeter. I might try. But we'll see how this sounds, you know. If it sounds really good, then uh, you can bet I'll find a way to get it into one of my diesels. All right. Okay, so I got the board back in here. All right. And I had to add a little wire, uh, extra leads. It was pretty tight stretch there. And so I added a couple of extra leads on there and I put a, put a shrink wrap around that, those to keep those isolated. And then there's my two speaker wires. There's the, I got them phased with red and black and red and black. I'll just hook those two up together. And then I used a little bit of uh, this Model Master clear part cement window maker. It's like canopy glue. And I uh, used that to glue this speaker box to the black foam in there. Okay. Right there. So it's going to sit there. That way, uh, this glue, you can sort of peel it away. So if I ever have to remove that, then I can get it out. So just want to be able to service it you know if I ever have to but uh, yeah she should be pretty good like that there's lots of room here see okay I use a little isopropyl alcohol to remove the flux. Just ble it just cleans it right off nice. That's what they use to clean PC boards anyway, is isopropyl bath. Why? Because it eats away all the flux. You don't want to leave flux on solder joints because if you seal them up like they because it's corrosive, right? So you know it'll corrode soundboards. I think ESU and TCS warns about that as well. So you want to clean that off, right? All your solder joints with a bit of isopropyl alcohol. Then I got a couple of sleeves here. So I got one here. So I'll just fold that over. Another sleeve there. Be careful I don't melt my Atherin Genesis mechanical reefer. You know, if I was in the manufacturing department, I would have put better speakers in these. You know, maybe they weren't around then, maybe, because I don't know what year these were released, but, geez, I wouldn't have done that, man. I wouldn't have put these piece of crap right here. Go right in the garbage, that piece.
Okay, she's wired up. She's ready for testing. Let's go to the layout and have a listen.